Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to have to the latest from the live radar. Run through the weather warnings as we do have an ice and wind warnings issued for parts of Scotland over the next few days as we are going to see some wintriness around especially in the next 12 hours or so and we are going to see some more windy weather over the next few days as it turns milder and westerly uh, as we do see low pressure coming back in uh, after we've had a brief little period of arctic air the last couple of days. Into the weekend, it is going to turn much colder again with a northeasterly or easterly flow as we do see high pressure moving to our north. We're not expecting anything too major at this stage, but the big thing about this east or northeasterly wind is it is looking pretty sustained. It's going to hang around for a good few days at least, maybe even for the whole of next week. Uh, the only caveat to that is simply because it is in the longer range. It is difficult to pinpoint the exact pattern, but the majority of the longer range charts and ensemble members are fairly on board now with a pretty persistently cold pattern into next week, potentially even into the lead up to Christmas as well. At the moment, not expecting anything too wintry because it is mainly high pressure dominated, but we will expect lots of frost and potentially really quite chilly, cold feel for next week. Daytime temperatures will be in sort of the mid single digits, but will probably feel a good few degrees colder. And as I said, overnight temperatures would likely be down towards freezing. So do remember, if you enjoy my videos, make sure you like and subscribe. And remember to follow me on Twitter as well, the link's in the description. Now, if you start on the live radar, you see the most, it is pretty dry, apart from Scotland and bits of Northern Ireland. This is because we've had a cold, dry Arctic air mass moving in over the last sort of 24 to 48 hours, and it's been really chilly out there. Temperatures have been in around the mid-single digits, but it's felt a couple of degrees colder. At the moment, though, we are seeing westerly winds returning. As we have said over the past sort of week or so, this colder pattern we've seen in the last few days is a very brief but intense interlude. And you can see as this weather front is moving in, there's a bit of snow here over inland, Scotland, especially higher ground. And this is why we've got that ice warning that we'll have a look at in a minute. But with this westerly wind flow returning, it all will turn back to rain by Wednesday. Uh, and it is going to be milder through Wednesday and Thursday. Do you look on the temperatures at the moment in just recording this around 6 p.m.? And you see the most to the east of that weather front. Temperatures are still down to the low single digits, if not touching freezing. And that will continue overnight tonight. It is going to be dependent on cloud amounts. May hover just above freezing where we've got more cloud. But generally still a really quite cold feel out there. Classic kind of winter feeling uh, over the uh, over the course of this evening before it turns, as I said, milder into the next few days. To look at the weather warnings, we've got this ice warning issued for much of eastern Scotland. It expires at 10 a.m. and it's for ice on untreated surfaces, may causing some transport disruption and maybe some accidents. Band of rain and snow will move east across Scotland this afternoon and evening, which could lead to some lying snow over the higher ground. But once this clears, temperatures will quickly fall during the evening uh, and ice will likely form. Of course, the milder air mass is moving in, but we're still going to see colder conditions overnight tonight as we still have remnants of cold rare, especially at the surface not expecting anything too major but we have got this yellow warning issued through wednesday and thursday we then have this wind warning that comes into force 4 p.m tomorrow and expires at 9 a.m on thursday and again we're looking at 50 to 60 miles per hour quite widely 65 to 75 really only covering the far north of scotland it will be gusty elsewhere but as i said not expecting major disruption at all now, if you look at the latest UKV, you can see that area of rain moving through at the moment, turning to snow over the higher ground. But eventually, it will clear. It will be chilly through Wednesday morning, but you can see cloud building from the west, and we see another massive weather front moving in that really sparks the change towards milder air. It is going to be briefly milder tomorrow, slightly milder, um, but properly milder conditions will come through Wednesday evening with this big weather front. Now, the rain continues through much of Wednesday night, lingering in the southeast, and see another big band of rain moving through there on Thursday. It does look pretty miserable and pretty active, this rain. There could be some really quite heavy, blustery showers moving in within it, lines of potentially even some thunderstorms there on the back edge of the weather front. Eventually, it does clear, uh, and we do go slightly chillier for Friday, but then we do see another weather front moving through, especially in southern areas, which could be 
Uh, again, giving some really quite wet conditions. But already the cold air is starting to build in in the northern areas. And that's why this weather front's further southwards, because the jet stream is getting shifted and pushed away. Cold air's already starting to take over with that higher pressure. But we see this last kind of low pressure system moving through. Now, this would kind of be the dream for snow if we did have a proper cold air mass in place. But if you look at the upper air temperatures, you can see the very cold air, cold enough for snow, is across Northern Ireland and Scotland not across England or Wales. So we're not expecting any snow with this. But on another day and another occasion with cold air more in place, this would have been a kind of a, um, a perfect storm for heavy snow for southern areas. But not in this case. And you can see as that clears, we all go much colder as eventually we do start to see that north to northeast wind pushing in. And you see the upper air temperatures start to turn much colder for all as that wind does start to veer in. We can look at the uh, mean winds. You can already see that northerlies coming in and it will transition to more of a northeasterly in the next few days after that. And to look at the max temperature, you see earlier today, it was cold, only six or seven degrees at best. Uh, many areas even lower than that. Into Wednesday, a frost where we see clearer skies and during the afternoon, it's still going to be pretty chilly, but slightly milder, maybe seven, eight or nine degrees. Overnight into Thursday, that's when we start to see milder air properly pushing in. And you can see by Thursday afternoon, into the double digits, 12 or 13 degrees. And by Friday, starting to turn chillier again, 7 or 8 degrees, so hovering around average. And then into the weekend, it starts to turn much colder once again. Saturday, only 4 or 5, and we're expecting it to be as cold, if not colder, as we head into Sunday, as those Arctic air mass do start to take over. Now, it is looking very cold, that longer-term prospects, or medium-term prospects, but I must emphasise, we're not expecting massive amount of precipitation at this stage. We're not expecting any major snow for the time being because it is going to be mainly high pressure dominated. And we can see that on the latest GFS. Now you see the westerly winds coming in at the moment. Uh, that's why we're going to see those big bands of rain over the next couple of days. But eventually this high pressure gets going in the North Atlantic and it pushes in a northerly wind. Now this high pressure is not penetrating up towards Iceland or Greenland or at least sitting there with its centre. You know, the high pressure is getting or trying to get up there, but it's not properly penetrating towards that region. So it means this northerly will be temporary, bringing in that cold air before eventually it topples. And then we just put in a slack easterly. And this is why we're not expecting any major snow because we're going to be cold with this easterly flow, but it is going to be a dry, colder pattern. And eventually the high pressure does fully topple. We do see milder air moving in, at least from this GFS run. Other runs hold an easterly for a bit longer, like the ECMWF does. But what we do see is an inversion taking place underneath this. So the upper air temperatures won't really make too much of a difference to the surface temperatures. In the subsequent days, we have another go at another northerly wind, again pushing some more very cold air in. And eventually towards the end of the run, we do start seeing more of a westerly influence. But we're still seeing this high pressure attempting to ridge northwards, trying to build something much more uh, cold or wintry there into the lead up to Christmas, which I definitely think is a possibility. GFS here is actually fairly flat and westerly comparatively to other runs. We're still seeing amplification. We're still seeing those cold air masses but it's not quite as blocked as some of the other runs we've seen recently or some of the runs we're going to look at, at uh, right now. Now, if you look at the latest GM, uh, again, westerly flow continuing over the next couple of days, that northerly wind arriving through the weekend, and then eventually it veers more of an easterly. That easterly holds on for much of the early part of next week, and you see cold air masses trying to push in. And then eventually, look at day 10. It actually goes very cold and very wintry because we see the high pressure moving back out into the Atlantic, halting the jet stream, and we see northerly winds with a very southerly tracking jet stream. We'd likely see lots of precipitation with some of it falling as snow. Now, the upper air temperatures are very marginal here for most areas. For Scotland, less so, but for many areas it would be marginal, so it'd be difficult to say how much of this would fall as snow. But if we do look at the new snow depth, you can see extensive snow even here across southern England. So very interesting here from the GM. If we do look at the two meter temperatures, just about hovering around freezing. If we try and put on the dew points, you can see again, hovering around freezing. So it is very marginal, but GM by far the, uh, the coldest and most wintry run we've seen for this period. So it just shows you very quickly, we can go from a cold dry pattern to something very cold and wintry simply because we see that low pressure coming out of the Arctic. Instead of what we're looking at, at least for the early part of next week, is more of cold air coming in from the east or northeast, you know, dry, chilly continental air. This is where we get fuller, uh, fully Arctic air pushing in with 
lower pressure. So very interesting here from the GM. Now, the ECM Duraf is similar in terms of being very cold, but it's probably a bit drier because it is more high pressure dominated. Now, you can see again that northerly wind arriving, but look at this, the high pressure is quite a bit further north. It's actually established itself more towards Scandinavia and Iceland. And we do continue to push in a pretty strong easterly for the majority of this run. And look at this, the high pressure actually detaches from the main flow and we do see proper easterly winds pushing in. And I must say, into the longer term, eventually the high pressure does lose its strength and it does break down. But here, it's a prime position to potentially develop something exceptionally cold. If that high pressure moves slightly further northwards, look at this big lobe of tropospheric polar vortex that is heading into Scandinavia that would head it how away. And you can even see here for the, uh, for the United Kingdom, we are cold with that air coming in from the east Two meter dew points are towards freezing or below freezing. Temperatures are very cold as well. So yeah, it would be a very interesting pattern. So all three runs are cold. GFS is less so. GM is more wintry. East and is more blocked and sustained, but uh, it, but it is drier. So yeah, all three runs show different scenarios, but all are cold, and some of them are even very cold. And like the GM, could be pretty wintry. Now we have got pretty strong confidence in this sort of pattern um, taking off and the reason for that is the ensembles are fairly on board with below average temperatures all the way into the lead up to Christmas. You can pretty much get out to the sort of the 18th, 19th here, so leading up to the week before Christmas, slightly milder through the, through the next couple of days. But then look at that through the weekend into the start of next week, much colder through Monday sort of to Wednesday, Thursday. That's looking guaranteed. Beyond that, it's still looking very cold, but there's slight uptick because of some milder runs. And even beyond that, it stays very chilly. The one thing we are, aren't seeing is massively cold runs. There are a few runs getting towards minus 10, so we're not seeing any crazy cold but we this time of year we do have very low levels of sun strength very short days in terms of uh, in terms of sunlight that is we don't always need the coldest air masses to see something very chilly to see ice days things like that and of course it is more difficult this time of year because we are early on in the winter the, the air masses to our north aren't quite as cold and extensive as they'll be in a month or two's time so it does mean it is more difficult but at the same time you don't need as much of that colder air just because of uh of how short the days are so yeah we'll have to wait and see exactly what does evolve but it could be a really quite chilly two weeks leading up to christmas and if we saw you know two or three weeks of below average temperatures there's almost a guaranteed chance that we will see snow within that doesn't don't i don't think the next sort of week or so you know into early next week i don't think there'll be much snow because it is pretty dry at least initially scotland of course always got a reasonably high chance but elsewhere it's the days and the weeks following that where it still looks cold still looks blocked but we could see something more unsettled mixing in with that so there is real intrigue here leading up to christmas we're not seeing the massive cold charts that we have seen in prior years uh, they're failed but what we are seeing is fairly consistent runs showing Below average conditions, cold conditions, nothing exceptional at this stage. But every single day, confidence builds. And I said, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw a surprise or two within this colder pattern. Uh, potentially something a bit more severe, something a bit more wintry, like the G GM was showing. And even like the ECMWF, which isn't producing you know, anything major in terms of air masses. But because of how sustained it is, the temperatures of the surface can get really cold very quickly. So... We'll have to wait and see, but there is real intrigue here leading up to Christmas. We could be in for a really quite cold and block spell leading up to um, to that Christmas period. And yeah, would it be surprised to see some of that white stuff as well? And if we finish by looking at the ECMWF, you'll be able to see that it is pretty much exactly the same. Um, of course, there is a little bit more spread in the longer term, but generally from around that sort of 8th of December point through to around the 13th, 14th, 15th, Fairly confident it's going to be below average, significantly below average from a lot of the runs. A bit more uptick in the longer term, but equally there are some colder runs appearing as well. So we'll have to wait and see, but definitely cold and blocked for the next sort of week to 10 days and potentially even into the week leading up to Christmas. Just too far away to say with any real certainty. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed subscribing new, and I'll see you again for another video soon.